हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ बॉड आई होप यूर ऑल डूइंग वेल और आपके एग्जाम की तैयारी भी बहुत अच्छे से चल रही है इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट कंप्यूटर अवेयरनेस बट बिफोर आई टेल यू वट वॉट आर ऑल द कंटेंट्स ऑफ दिस वीडियो डोंट फर्गेट टू सब्सक्राइब टू आई यूट्यूब चैनल फॉर लेटेस्ट वीडियोज so under the broad category of computer knowledge or computer awareness we will be talking about the definition of computer the characteristics of computer the different types of computers the generation of computers and important mcqs with respect to that before we start discussing about computer awareness this is a special program being launched by olive board for all the aspirants of ibps pu examination here in we will be taking free live online course for you from 4th of september till 12th of october 2018 this online course will contain daily live classes by experts from olive board live doubt clearing sessions if you have any doubt with respect to any subject you can just ask and you will be provided with solution at that very moment we will also have live practice sessions for you and free concept videos that you can refer to please know that this is absolutely free being provided by olive board only for you let's start with the definition of computer so a computer is an electronic device that can be instructed to carry out an arbitrary set of arithmetic or logical operations automatically so we as users guide our computer to carry out a certain activity for us now the characteristics of computer first it the speed we know that the speed of computer is very high this is because in a computer the signal passes at the speed of light we know that light passes very fast or the speed of light is very fast so our mind takes time to calculate as humans but when we talk about a computer its speed is very high therefore millions of calculations can be done within a second accuracy so as we know that computers work on inbuilt software web programs there are various software programs that we keep in our computers for it to run smoothly and quick hence the accuracy level is also very high and there's no scope of human errors third is information and storage so as we know our computer can store a large amount of data much more than our brain can also store so therefore the memory can be retrieved at any point of time whenever we need anything from our computer and we go to the search uh, search and ask for it it just provides us with that data other characteristics of a computer include consistency so though we as humans may get tired by working throughout the day but computer never gets tired it is consistent it has automatic operation so uh, we just have to feed in data and it does all the actions or the process on its own and it is also very flexible unlike humans let us quickly glance through the types of computers so first are personal computers that we all have which are called pcs so these are small inexpensive computers and they are used for personal usage these are also called micro computers we know right the size has been reducing since a uh, a decade maybe so initially we used to have 15 inch computers and now we also have 9 or 11 inch computers and they are popularly used at homes for playing games or surfing the internet so before we started using facebook on our mobile phones it was available only in desktop format and it is also used for word processing or desktop publishing spreadsheet and database management applications also then mini computers so these mini computers were designed for a specific task but they have now lost their popularity because all the activities that were designed for in mini computers are now available in personal computers third is main frames now these computers are very expensive and are large in their size they are capable of supporting hundreds of users simultaneously they are used for specific large scale applications then supercomputers so as we know supercomputers are very powerful expensive and are the fastest computers in the world they are used for applications that require large amount of mathematical computation so when we talk about satellites there is the 
work of supercomputer because we cannot use personal computers when we are operating or channelizing satellite related works for example for weather forecasting or fluid dynamics or graphic designing all of this requires supercomputers now we'll start with the generation of computers so the first generation of computers was in the period of 1946 to 1915 uh, 1959 in these computers vacuum tubes were used for memory storage and also for building cpu circuits now these vacuum uh, tubes produced a high amount of heat and therefore they used to get fused very frequently and also they were very expensive and non portable they could not we cannot move it like when we talk about our personal computers or laptops now we can move it from one place to another but these first generation computers could not be moved from one place to another because of the huge size and they consumed a lot of electricity that's the reason they produced a lot of heat and also required ac to control their heating example is uni Advac, 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 then IBM 650, 701, ENIAC. The second generation computers were spanning from 1959 to 1965. So in this generation, transistors were used for the first time, which made computers work faster and more reliable than the first generation computers. Also, the primary memory storage devices like magnetic cores or magnetic tapes and disks were invented during this period. High-level programming languages called COBOL and Fortran were also used in these second generation computers the operating system had also come up and it enhanced the multi-programming of these computers so they were better than first generation computers with respect to heat generation because these did not contain uh, the vacuum tubes and the electricity consumption was also reduced and the speed and performance was still better than the first generation computers but here also these computers were very expensive and was not accessible to common people the examples are cdc 1604 cdc 3600 univac 1108 and ibm 1620 Coming to the third generation of computers, the period ranged from 1965 to 1971. And these computers were built with integrated circuits, which was invented by Jack Kilby. So, several transistors, capacitors and resistors were brought together to build this single integrated circuits. The computers had advanced to the usage of time sharing and remote processing also along with the multi-programming operating systems now this generation of computers also used high level languages like pascal pl by one basic fortran 2 to fortran 4 etc the size of these computers reduced when compared to the first and second generation but they were still very big the performance of this computer was uh, faster than the previous computers. So the examples are Honeywell 6000 series, IBM 370 by 168, TDC, ICL 2900, etc. The period for fourth generation computers were from 1971 to 1980s. So very large scale integrated circuits were used to build these fourth generation computers. And these computers were developed using microprocessors that we talk about. So each very large scale integrated circuit had around 5000 transistors used on a single chip. So these computers were most affordable and were also portable computer to the earlier generations and they were the reason for the computer personal computer revolution also that now we all almost all of us have a personal computer distributed operating systems and real-time networks were the additional technologies that were used in the computers of fourth generation c c database etc were the high level languages that were used in these computers and the size of the computers was reduced to desktop size and they were also easy easily available and internet was born during this period the example of fourth generation computers are apple 2 star 1000 pup 11 de de december 10 etc 
The fifth generation computers started from 1980s and till present times we are in the fifth generation of computers. Ultra large scale integration technology replaced the VLSI circuits that came up in the fourth generation. So these ultra large scale integration technology can create microprocessor chips that have 10 million electronic components and parallel procession hardware and artificial intelligence softwares are the base of these fifth generation computers. The interface of these computers are very user friendly and they also support multimedia applications. So at the same time we can use many applications. So these generation of computers are used for development of artificial intelligence which includes technologies like neutral networks, robotics, game playing, natural language understanding and also generation. So example all modern day desktops, the laptops, notebooks, iPads etc all fall under the fifth generation computers. Now we have questions for you. So the first question is in MS Word the option of spelling check features under which tab? Reference tab, review tab, insert tab, file tab or layout tab? So the correct answer is review tab that is option B. The second question is what is the full form of ISP? Is it International Systems Project, Inter Indian Service Planning, Internet Service Planning, Internet Service Provider or none of these? So the correct answer here is option D that is Internet Service Provider. The third question, how many generations of computer are there? We just read about generation of computers. So the correct answer here is B, five generations. Next question is, specialized programs that assist users in locating information on the web are called A, search engines, second locator engines, resource locators or web browsers. So the correct answer is A, search engines. The next question, C, basic, COBOL, Java, etc. are examples of which language? Low level, computer logic, assembly level or high level? Here the correct answer is high level language that is option D. Now EEPROM is that it stands for A. Easily erable, second electronically erasable, third is none of this and fourth is electrically erasable. So here the correct answer is D. Electrically erasable. The next question, Dash is a professionally designed empty document that can be adapted to the user's needs. So A, template, B, guide, C, document, D, a file. So the correct answer is A, template. Next question, administrative supervision of database activities is the responsibility of the A, VP, DP administrator, database administrator, systems engineer or DP manager. Here, the correct answer is B. Database Administrator. The next question. Which of the following technique provides dedicated communication channel between two stations? A. Switch network. B. Piggybacking. C. Circuit switching. D. Packet switching. So here the correct answer is A. Switch network. Next question is end-to-end -end connectivity is provided from host to host in A. Transport layer. Data link layer application layer or network layer. Here the correct answer is A, transport layer. What is the purpose of primary key in a database? A, provide a map of the data. B, establish constraints on database operations. C, uniquely identity a record. D, unlock a database. So here the answer is C, uniquely identity a record. Next question, network components are connected to the same cable in dash topology. Bus, ring, mesh or star? Here the correct answer is A. Bus topology. That's all we have for you in today's video. I hope you liked the video. Please do share it with your friends and let us know how did you find the video. And if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, please go ahead and subscribe now. I wish you all the very best for your examination and wish to see you soon. Thank you.